Science Jay here, welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 157. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three reviews a week. Oh. Could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This, this week, oh my gosh. So I, we, we are in the middle of packing for Adepticon and we just finished watching the Games Workshop Adepticon reveals on this very couch. And holy moly, the, the tagline of this reveal was Sigmar lied. And Sigmar didn't lie, but Games Workshop did. I feel weird. Number one. So the way Games Workshop does reveals is pretty much fine. They have a cute little live show on Twitch where it usually lasts about 30 minutes. There's kind of a chat Q&A at the end of it, but they they get through the reveals in short order. They give you nice shots that you can screenshot of the actual reveals. No longer. They have completely changed the way they do it and it is horrible. They had, it was it was pre-recorded, and so it was just a string of YouTube videos. And after each YouTube video would be the gang talking about, you know, the crew from Games Workshop talking about the YouTube video that we just saw. We barely got to see any miniatures. They were only on screen for a few seconds each. They weren't the lovely online photos we usually get. They were actual video that was a little bit dark and hard to see on this iPad. The chat was on fire. No one was into it, especially because it lasted an hour and a half as opposed to maybe 30 minutes like it usually is. Oh my goodness. It was, it was wild. It was terrible. Very, very light reveal, light on the actual reveals. And some things didn't actually get revealed. It was, it's kind of a dirty lie. If you like Necromunda 30K or Age of Sigmar, you kind of didn't get anything. It's the Games Workshop just kind of flat out lied, which would be fine, I guess. Like if they just don't want to reveal it right now and leave it for the summer or something, that's fine. But don't put it on the poster saying, tune in for the Adepticon reveals we're showing things off for these games. And three of those games get nothing. They get nothing. Oh, the chat was on fire. It was the only thing keeping us going watching the entire reveal show because oh, there is some just some funny people chatting. Nobody liked the pre-recordedness. It was very, very like manufactured. It was kind of clean and shiny, way too much talking. Every reveal took like 20 minutes. It was a rough time. I really hope they don't keep doing these kinds of reveals because admittedly, the YouTube videos were good. Some of the some of the things that I'm interested in that they showed off, I'll probably go back and rewatch those videos when they post them on the Warhammer channel, but I didn't want to watch them tonight. I'm busy. I got to fold underwear and put my toothbrush into a Ziploc baggie. I need to leave in a few hours. Ah. Uh. Wow, what a wild ride. But I guess, I guess let's get into it. For Warhammer 40,000, we got two miniatures revealed and they're both for Chaos. We've got Chaos Lord on foot and Chaos Lord with jump pack. And they're fine. They look pretty darn good. They would look really nice alongside the modern Chaos Space Marine kits. I'm not a huge fan. I built the kit and it's a little bit on the monoposy side. The details are very tricky to paint, but it works for chaos. It does work as I feel like they're really, really good for like classic chaos undivided. These guys look fine. They kind of look very Warhammer-y to me, probably because there's not a big difference between chaos base Marines and the classic like chaos warriors. But having the fur pelts kind of around their necks makes them feel very chaos warrior as opposed to chaos base Marines. They'll look very, very good as Night Lords, but if you have something like an Iron Warriors or one of the more put together of the Chaos Warbands, you might end up doing a lot of kit bashing and converting to make it feel like your army, but that's just kind of how Chaos is. It's very ramshackle, very random. I like the look of these guys. The Chaos Lord with Jump Pack does look very precarious on his little bundle of smoke, but I think these guys are just fine. 
I was a little bit hoping for a little bit more with an Adepticon show off of 40k stuff, but it's fine. This is a reveal for Warhammer 40,000. So whatever. We got two big old battle forces if you want to try to get some miniatures for a discount. The Dread Talon looks pretty darn interesting, especially since the Warp Talons and uh, ooh, the Warp Talons, Accursed Cultists, the Accursed uh, Court and just Cultists. That's actually not a bad box because I think a lot of people don't have a lot of Warp Talons because they're really, really pricey for five guys. So being able to get a discount on that seems kind of nice. The other box, you got Terminators, Chosen, more Terminators, more Chaos Space Marines, and Chosen. Yeah, that's a fine box, but I'm guessing most people probably already have Chaos Space Marines and Terminators, so I don't know if that box is going to be a huge draw. These boxes are going to be the first places you're going to be able to get these guys, but I mean, if it's not hard to convert a Chaos Lord. If you have a Chaos Space Marine body, just paint his head a little extra special. He's a Chaos Lord. Moving on from Warhammer 40,000 to a new Warcry box. This I was a little bit wrong because I thought that the Age of Sigmar box for 4th edition was going to be Boner Boys versus Sigmar Marines, but it turns out that that model was actually for Warcry. We got some Sylvaneth. I love the Sylvaneth, although these guys are looking a little worse for wear. They have like tentacly roots growing on them, but still they're pretty darn cool. I really do like the Sylvaneths. Ooh, and some new spirit revenants or some new little, uh, little spirits. Yeah, I like the I like the bee lady. The bee lady is kind of cool. I would have to do something to the growths to make it look less like she has four tentacles coming out of her head and that it looks a little bit more like hair, but that shouldn't be too bad a kit bash. And what I get out of it is bees. Bees are awesome. I love the bees coming out of the hive, moving through her scepter, flowing around her and then being kind of cast by her other hand. That is a really, really sick model. Really looking forward to these guys. And the other half is the Boner Boys. And they are some weird, weird Boner Boys. I love them all, except for maybe the Centaur guy. Maybe just because he's literally a skeleton, but he looks a little bit stiff. Uh, centaurs are really, really hard to do well because it's a man coming out of a horse. It, the top, the head of a horse. Don't. Moving on. It's, it's a little bit awkward of just a thing in general. It's kind of weird also because he's kind of got a loincloth over the horse's chest. It's very odd. His whip is wrapped around like keeping it in line with the body, almost as if it's meant to go on like a 40 millimeter square base like classic Warhammer Fantasy, but it's not. I don't know. I'm not big on the centaur things, but maybe I'm just not a centaur guy. I really like all of the other boner boys. I love the boner dogs. I love the boner bats. I love the two little boner guys. Like there's some really, really cool stuff here for the whatever they're called, the boner boys. But yeah, the boner centaur. I don't know if I'm a fan of that. Moving on to Warhammer Underpants or Thunderpants. Does anybody remember that movie? It had Ron Weasley in it. It's a really, really weird movie. But Underworld, we got some fellas. I feel like there's been a few different Underworlds team that are like mad scientists or mad doctors. And this totally goes along with it. They almost don't look like Warhammer or they don't look like Games Workshop miniatures. They look like something a little bit from like a darker, more gritty universe, more Bloodborne. But I think they look great. I do like the little guy inside of the bigger guy. That's kind of fun. Or no, yeah, that's, that is kind of what it is. Yeah, that's really, really weird. And then the other guys just have things on the ends of chains that are coming out of their head. I assume lightning strikes their head and then moves through the chains. And then they zap people with their little prods. It looks it's kind of cool. I don't know if I get Underworlds. Like, it, it makes a lot of sense when they're Age of Sigmar factions, but when they're their own weird thing. I think the only one I've really loved was the Ogre Ma Tribe pirate guy with his little friends, with his little animal pirate friends. That was a really, really cool set. But other than that, eh? The other half of this Underworlds box, we've got some Flesh Eater Courts, and they are fantastic Flesh Eater Courts. Classic stuff. I really like the lady with the giant like butcher butcher knife and the tusk attached to her back. And, you know, you just can't go wrong with a big old bat guy. Not a Batman, a bat guy. These guys are pretty fun, but I don't know if there's uh, so much juice here that like it makes me want to pull the trigger on Underworlds. They've shown off other war bands that I like 
quite a bit more than spoopy guys versus spoopy guys who are bats. Just a little too much spoopiness. But speaking of spoopiness, for Age of Sigmar, but not Age of Sigmar 4.0, don't get too excited, this dominated the reveal show. Literally, they spent 30 minutes talking about this because they showed off the model for a split second, and then they talked about the model, and then they talked about the lore of the model, and then there was a review of the lore video of this model. It was kind of wild, but it is late spooky lady on a big old dragon. Ooh, and actually getting to see the model, because I couldn't really see what was happening in the reveal show. It is pretty dang cool. Dark Oath and the Bloodbound Surge Across Ashy and Archaeon let loose Arbraxia, Spear of the Ever Chosen upon Gyran. Too many fake words. Too many fake words in a row for me. Abraxia. It kind of reminds me, there's ah, oh, there's an there was an old Warhammer Fantasy character that had a spear. She was like a little, like a demon lady with a shield that was had a mouth on it and a big old spear. I forget her name, but it sounded a lot like Abraxia. That was a really cool meteor. I actually have one. Right when I was pretty sure Games Workshop was gonna discontinue Finecast, I bought a bunch of the Finecast models I actually want in my collection. And that was one of them just cause I thought it was a really cool miniature. This model is pretty sweet. I do like the dragony thing, kind of the gator goat monster. I like the armor. I like that each segment of it has one giant long spike. And then she looks pretty badass riding on top with a little fire sword and a cape that looks a little bit too close to be safe to that fire sword. But yeah, this is a very, very cool model. I heard a lot said about her lore, but I don't remember any of it, but it's a cool model. For 30K, they revealed they're bringing back the dwarves. I have a dwarf army. I love my dwarf army. I was already planning on picking up some more dwarves. I actually have a friend's dwarf army. And so that is like doubled my collection. I just need to paint it. And hopefully when they reveal this, I'll be able to pick up a few of the last little dwarvy things that I'm missing and I will have a proper dwarf collection. But the thing that really got me going was the kill team reveal. I don't understand. So it seemed like Games Workshop is kind of doing away with the new things coming to Kill Team. The newest box is two brand spanking new things for Kill Team. Once again, these are just things that are going to be made for Warhammer 40,000, but they're appearing in Kill Team first. But we got the Hearthkin Pioneers off of their bikes and they look glorious, incredibly short, short fellas with the biggest cloaks you have ever seen. Big biker jackets big old revolver pistols. One guy just has an RPG and hilariously his RPG has a bipod. That's just incredible. So he can get a really steady shot when he fires that RPG rocket. And the other half is Brood Brothers, the Astra Militarum who have been converted and corrupted into the Gene Stealer cult. Little tiny spoiler. I'm work, I've been working on my Gene Stealer cults and it's very, very exciting. And it's really cool to see the Gene Stealer cult getting a little bit of love from Warhammer 40,000. Some proper brood brothers. For years and years, we've had just like one upgrade frame of heads that will fit on Cadian bodies. But now we get some proper culty fellas. I also feel like, hmm, they are just wearing classic Cadian fatigues. It would have been a nice opportunity to get something where maybe if like, you just swap the heads, you could have something a little closer to Steel Legion or Mordian Guard or something. But I do like these guys a lot. They're super, super cool. And you get the, at this point, it's getting kind of old, Patriarch Sprue that comes with the Magus and the uh, Needler Pistol guy and the two familiars. This is kind of an older Sprue. It's still available on Games Workshop Store. I think it's actually the only way you can still get the Primus. So yeah, you get this sprue. If you're a Gene Stiller color player, you probably have a few of this sprue, but it's going to come again in Kill Team. And I'm really excited to see how the Patriarch plays in Kill Team because it is by far the largest miniature that has ever been in Kill Team. I think it stands on a 60 millimeter base. That is absolutely monstrous. And it's a Patriarch. It is an absolute monster. Really, really excited for these things. Maybe not necessarily in Kill Team, but I just, I want more Gene Stiller cults. And crazily, that was just a little handful of models. That was it. That was it for the grand reveal show. They showed off for 30K and for Necromunda, very short 
10 second teaser videos. And after they played the teaser videos, they had a little discussion about the teaser video that they just played. A pre-recorded one, it wasn't live. So they weren't like interacting with the chat. Ah, Games Workshop. Literally, if you really, really like 30K, you got to know that something Adeptus Mechanicus. That is all we know. Something Adeptus Mechanicus. And if you like Necromunda, we got even less of a tease. We got a very, like the very fuzzy outline silhouette of some Mad Max kind of um, Judge Dread looking dudes. But that's kind of everything for Necromunda. So I feel like it doesn't really even shed a light on what it could be. But that's, that's, that's it. That's, that's it for those two reveals. I would not call them reveals. It's not like those things were never, like we were never ever gonna get any more Necromunda or 30K. So it's not even a reveal that things are coming for those games because we knew things were coming for those games. And speaking of things coming for games, Age of Sigmar 4th edition has officially been said out loud by Games Workshop. It is actually happening. There's a very, very cool animation. And to let us know how cool the animation was, after we got to watch the little animation with the Skaven versus the Stormcast Eternals, we had to sit through 15 minutes of the Games Workshop crew talking about how cool the animation was. Like it wasn't even the guys who made the video, it was just nerds. I'm a nerd, I can talk about it myself. I don't need to watch that right now. It's getting really late. <sighs> and then they talked about Age of Sigmar, what's coming in the fourth edition. It seems to be a major reset a la uh, Warhammer 40K 10th edition, which was shown off properly at Adepticon last year with a beautiful reveal of the launch box and the animation and all of the things coming. It was very exciting. Apparently they're not ready yet for Age of Sigmar, so we got nothing. No information on what's in the box. It's almost certainly going to be Stormcast Eternal and Skaven, but no idea of what miniatures. Probably the woman in the trailer is going to be some kind of a featured character, I would imagine. Although, the, the catchphrase, the tagline, Sigmar lied. Kinda? I guess? When with Dominion three years ago, when Games Workshop showed off that box, there was Yundrasta, the the biggest, baddest Stormcast Eternal imaginable. She fights monsters and demons in the biggest bad. And her tragic story is every time she dies, she loses a little bit more of her soul. And so her immortal days are numbered. And it's it's very wonderful and very tragic. And we just got confirmation that that is still a thing. That's the Sigmar lied. I guess potentially, that information that she's slowly ex she's slowly dying again from all of her deaths in Age of Sigmar. Maybe that was previously, I guess, narrator, like third person perspective writing. And now it's first person perspective. Maybe the Sigmar Marines are aware of their new mortality inside of their immortality. But it's not really like a big grand reveal. Like I thought there'd be something like Sigmarines are evil or could become evil or there's some big gloom and doom scary thing going on. It's kind of just the story of Yandrasta told again. Very, very cool animation, kind of got me pumped, but uh, it's, we didn't get to see the models. We we didn't get to see the box. We didn't get anything. It's, it's weird. Games Workshop lied. Like they just pulled the rug out from under us. I'm kind of glad. Last year we went to Adepticon to see it in person. And it is fun in person. Everybody cheers and claps and gets excited. And it's fun to be around that energy. But sitting here on this couch with the Twitch chat, it was, it's just, it's just kind of a bummer. It wasn't, you know, it's hard to argue about, ah, cool new miniatures. Some of them look cool. Some of them look cool, but we're not gonna buy them. But it's just weird. It's just weird that it's not what they promised or it's not what they've done previously. And it took an hour and a half. I didn't have an hour and a half. It sucks. <laughs> but you know what's never a lie? That's right, the terrain available on our Patreon. Over there, we have a new set of terrain every month. This month, it's the modular Gothic buildings. These impressive structures are designed with competitive war games in mind. They are the perfect size, shape, and have functional windows for all of your line of sight blocking needs. And for added decorations, we have cyber cherubs, ready to spice up your models and terrain. The Games Workshop Adepticon reveals we're kind of a giant letdown. Really, really just weird. I'm excited that Gene Stealer Cult are coming, but 
other than that, I'll probably watch the Age of Sigmar trailer again. I don't know. I don't know what to think. Thanks for watching.